I would say our friendship started before Special Olympics, but uh, there was always times where people looked at friend at him. And I didn't actually worry about that because for me a friend is someone you can rely on. And then from that, we've been together ever since. Whenever he needs help, I'll be there. When he introduced me to Special Olympics, I thought, wow, he's considering me. So I was really touched by it, and it really inspired me a lot to help more people. So I started in 2018 as an athlete leader. Um, yeah, I didn't have a lot of skills when I first started off. I went to trainings, um, athlete leader trainings. I learned a lot with other provinces coming together, sharing the ideas. You know, it wasn't easy at start because I was shy a lot because you don't know what to expect, what are they going to say. You know. So for me at the start, I was shy, but now that I'm getting used to it, I'm, I'm doing a lot of training and so forth, so I'm getting the hang of it. Um, so yeah. We started, I think, the beginning of 2018. The beginning, yeah. yeah and then he introduced me about six months later, and that's where I was like, wow, okay, let me give it a try, because I'm open to new opportunities as well. So from there, I was like, oh, traveling. I never get to travel. I was like, okay, okay. And then from that, I got new experiences, met a lot of people, learned different languages as well. Um, just that's a, a wow, it's a wow factor in my life. A youth leader needs to be open to new ideas, needs to listen to others, you know. It's always important to listen to others because there's no use you going to talk and talk and talk and you're not listening to the others. Be patient as well because as you know, not everybody's the same, so you need to take time and process everything. And yeah, I just think that if you need to be a leader, you just need to consider other leaders as well. We started off with the soup kitchen. Um, we first were training children, under, underprivileged children on the farm. So we went out every Saturday, we give training, soccer training. So kids would come there with their underpants or they would come with just like a bare feet, yes. And then we will um, offer them training, soccer training, because kids in Mitchell's play like soccer, so we gave back to them. And then after that, we started giving out like t-shirts, Special Olympics t-shirts to them so that, that they can feel proud. And every time that they see us, they want to know when are we coming back to them, when can we um, get soccer training and so forth. And then we also gave out soup at the same place to the children. Um, they appreciated it. We took pictures and we shared it with our, with Wanga, yeah. You know, it, was, it wasn't easy at the start. We didn't have a lot of girls taking part in our girls team, especially as us, we are guys, you know. Parents think that we want to do different things with their, with their daughters and stuff like that. But we assured them, like, as time went on, um, they can trust us with their children and, and grow from there. So at the start of the year, we had, like, about, I think, 20 ladies um, that we were training. So. Yeah, it's growing so far. I am a leader of the generation because um, at the moment I feel that I'm a role model in the community. So I think I'm playing a bigger role in the lives of especially the females that they can look up to me and know that everything is not all lost and we can make it through it. I feel that everybody has their own talent and they are, they just need the opportunity as well. So I'm trying to just show them, look, yes, opportunity, show me what you've got, and I'll back them up 100%. Taking away from the program what we're learning and implementing it in Western Cape so we can get more opportunities for people out there to hear more about Special Olympics because I don't think it's, um, how can I say, big in Cape Town. It's only a handful, it's just a certain amount of places that you go to they know about Special Olympics so we want to create awareness so that everybody knows also about Special Olympics. Meeting new people, getting new opportunities, traveling, seeing new things, 
learning about other people as well, learning their backgrounds, learning what they went through, and basically just trying to help out. Okay, sometimes it just motivates me to tell me that you can't do this, don't worry about what others say, because sometimes I'll be like sitting there and I'll be like, oh, I can't do this now. And then he will, he will encourage me to tell me that you can't do this, despite of what anybody else says, you know, so yeah. Um, my point of view is, is too much. I'll probably have like 10 pages full, but <laughs> most of all, you're somebody that you can depend on in time of need. And it's always the, or always put a smile on your face. And I'm very thankful for having in my life. So basically, having this opportunity means a lot to us because it gives us the experience and uh, the opportunities that we need as well. So I just think that's a big part in our life as well. I would just like to thank everybody, especially on Peace as well, giving us the opportunity, showing us that there is people around the world taking out of everybody. And not just, I wouldn't say selfish people, but nonchalant people as well. So yeah, big thank you and a big shout out to Swiss Olympics. Thank you. I also like to thank Special Olympics. Firstly, Special Olympics South Africa and then Special Olympics Africa for also giving us opportunities like this, you know. I think if we weren't to be involved with Special Olympics, I don't think we would be here today, you know. We would maybe be sitting on the corners and not doing anything about this. Um, I would also like to thank Wanga for always backing us, you know, and then Ancelo also for backing us all the way. And thank you to everybody that made this possible for us to be here. Thank you.